Coming up on today's episode of Technoid, the Apple HomePod has received yet another patent combined with Apple, or taken by Apple in better terms, and in the patent we'll discuss how it gives you a hands-free experience and the future of the HomePod should Apple want to pursue and continue this if we're ever gonna see another HomePod. Also on today's episode, Google Messages has gained Gmail-like message orientations. I will explain to you exactly what that means and how that is beneficial should you want to use it. And also we have a quick update on the Samsung triple wireless charging pad. We have more details about it and supposedly the price should this come over to America. All that on today's episode, so stay tuned. Yo, what's happening everybody? Michael here, welcome back to Technoid. I hope you all are doing excellent, I'm doing excellent as well. And again, it feels like I've been behind this thing in almost a century, so it's always good to be behind the camera. But welcome back everybody, it's good to be back. Um, again, I've been there, but just not behind this thing for a while. Now, to those of you returning, thank you as always. Make sure you hit the like button. To new people that are just joining on for the first time, if you like the content, if you like what I bring to the table, please consider hitting that subscribe button and turn on your notifications so you do not miss when I upload. And make sure to share the video because today we got a couple of stories. Some of them you might be intrigued, the other one you might not be, but there's always a story for somebody. Now that we got that out of the way, let's get it. So story number one, we're gonna start with the main story as everybody keeps yelling at me, oh, you saved the story for the end, but I usually do it for a purpose to see if you actually watch the video long term because everybody just skimmers through but you can't win. So I'm gonna start with the main story, the Apple HomePod. Now, as you know, the HomePod is still trying to figure out exactly where it fits in. It's doing okay now. I hear sales are starting to boost just a little bit, but ultimately the HomePod is almost two years old, maybe even three. I don't even know how long it's been. I've completely forgotten. Well, regardless, it looks like Apple is going to finally push this thing and it seems newer HomePods will have a better use of technology. And according to Tech Genzies, Jesus, they come up with these names like they know what they're calling themselves. But according to this website, Apple has filed for a patent and they were successfully approved and published by the US Patent and Trademark Office. Not only does the HomePod have more better capabilities as a home phone, literally a home phone, but also will have better hands-free technology. So taking a look at the patent, essentially you can't really make out exactly what it is in the image, but if we take closely, it says here that the phones will link up to the cellular towers and then your phones will automatically sync to the HomePod if you're at home, so you can take a call hands-free, it'll prompt you on your phone. Now, regularly, you can make a call and you could send it to the HomePod, but you can only do that through voice and also manually through your phone. Of course you can link it, but it seems this time around, the phone calls will be directed right to the HomePod. Instead of you telling it to go to HomePod, it'll automatically ring for you and it'll send right to you on the HomePod if you're at home near the HomePod. Also in the patent, we see that there is some multi-end hands-free technologies with several HomePods. Two that looks like on a TV stand and then one in a kitchen it looks like. So that seems it might have better hands-free should you be using a HomePod in different rooms. I really hope that they're pushing the entertainment value because if we look at the patent quickly in the center where the TV is, it almost kind of reminds me of a sound bar. And that's something that I used to love my HomePods for before I was introduced to JBL. I always felt that the HomePods had sound bar capabilities, but Apple never really unlocked them. So I'm really hoping that they go that route because they actually sound pretty good for smart speakers. As for the rest of the patent, there's really not much else to see, but they're saying it'll be efficiently better with emergency situations, that you'll have your phone on standby with the use of a HomePod. Also, they're saying that with this patent, you can have communication links between smart home devices and smartphones that can rely on telephone calls from a smart home device. So ultimately, it seems in a way, they're also gonna try to make the HomePod like a hub. So that way, instead of having a smart hub like from Philips or something, you can use the HomePod to link all your lights and stuff. That's a possibility. I know Amazon has their own version. So I like the idea that they're trying to utilize the HomePod, trying to make it more accessible and they're trying but I think the one thing they need to worry about, instead of trying to put all these features in this thing, just sell the damn thing. Stop worrying about what we're gonna put in, stop worrying about what it could be, and just get the price down. Make a smaller one, make a cheaper one, but most of all, just make a new one. The first HomePod, like I said, was announced back in, I believe, 2017, and didn't even see the light of day till 2018, or maybe 
I don't know, I, 2019, I don't know when it was. Regardless, maybe my dates are wrong, but regardless, it feels like such a long time. So by now, an update would be nice. And even though these technologies and these ideas sound really good, I just want them to establish themselves on the smart speaker market. So sell some more HomePods, then we'll talk technology. All right, story number two is a quick update on the Samsung triple wireless charging pad. Now, originally I did a video where I mentioned it that Samsung had created a brand new wireless charging pad. This time around, it is a triple charger that will not only charge your watch, but your headphones and your smartphone. And I basically explained that there wasn't much information. Well, today we have a little bit more information and I'm gonna dive even further and explain the technology that is being used in this and why you might be a little disappointed. So taking a look at the new triple wireless charger, we have a better look and a better understanding. So for starters, it says here that according to Samsung, this is going to be using a six coil charging surface coverage. It will have six different coils in the placement of the mat, also a dedicated charger for the Galaxy Watch, but you can also use that to charge your devices. It's similar to like how the dual charger is, some people say it looks like a sliding mechanism for this triple charger, but other images are showing that it's just one piece. So we'll have to wait and see when we actually get the device. But taking a further look, you can charge all three devices with the wireless charger trio. We don't know exactly the voltage and watt wattage in terms of what adapter it's gonna use, but taking a closer look, at exactly the, the wattage in terms of the devices. It says here it will be able to charge all of the Galaxy watches up to two and a half watts of fast charging at the max. It will go up to nine watts of fast wireless charging or Qi compatible five watts. It will also allow the iPhones to go up to 7.5 watts. Now there is a saying that there won't be any fast charging 3 point or 2.0 but there is not much information on that, but they're saying that the coils will be able to charge everything efficiently and effectively and break down the wattage, whatever device you're using. And the price, believe it or not, we actually have a price. So taking a look at the article that gives the price, at first glance, you're probably saying, well, what does that make out to? According to this, it will come in two colors, white and black, and will retail for 99,000 won which converted into American dollars is $85. So definitely expect this pad to be in the 89, 99, 99, 99 price range because that's kind of similar to what the charging duo was, or maybe even no, who knows, they'll probably break 100. And last story, the main, uh, not the main story, but just last story, the Google messages with Gmail-like message orientation. So as you know, Google is still working on developing the whole messages app that they've released to everybody with RCS. And as you know, it is a huge, huge hit. Almost a billion people use the app and are taking advantage of RCS as we speak. Well, according to 9to5Google, according to the APK Insight, it says here that Google has uploaded to the Play Store some lines of codes within possible future uses and features that will be coming to Google Messages. So taking a look at this, if you take a look at the code name and also some screenshots, you will be able to OTP after automatically delete some profiles. I don't even know what they were saying at first, I'm not even gonna lie. But taking a quick further look, you could break down these secure links, you can create your own profiles, you can create your own certain things, and you can delete these messages after 24 hours, you can set up categories. So basically making it similar to the Samsung messages, except it got more googly. It kind of reminds me of Gmail, but I like the fact that they're trying to give new features. As for the message orientation section, it will allow you to enable and disable this feature. You could do the same thing with up to 24 hours. You could delete the messages should you want to. And mostly it will have authentic organization, which means it will be able to organize what is real and what is fake and what is spam, all that stuff. Now Google Messages on its own is a really, really good app. And I highly recommend it over Samsung Messages just for the sole fact that it has RCS. And to me, everybody should take advantage of that. But seeing that they're going this route with options, with normal lists and APK, insight showing us the message organization. I'm really convinced that Google is going to up this thing in the future. So definitely stay tuned for more news on the Google messages and any updates should they come. And that's it for today's episode of Technoid. Now guys, thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed the episode. If you did, hit the like button. If you disliked the video, hit that dislike button. That helps circulate my videos as well. As always, everybody, thank you so much for watching. Take care, everybody. I will see you all at the start of the week. Take care and peace.